Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're gonna to go through another 10 things that you're probably doing wrong in Premiere Pro. Let's go. How is it going guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that wanna shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dave here. Today we're gonna to go through another 10 tips when it comes to Premiere Pro and hopefully it'll help your workflow and just getting stuff done faster and easier. These are tips I've kind of discovered throughout the years and we've had lots of comments on the other videos saying how helpful these are. So we'll just keep them going until we run out of tips. So let's go. Now the first one is enabling and disabling clips. In this example, I've got some textures I've popped on this footage I've got from Envato Elements and you can select them and then enable or disable them. But the shortcut that might make life easier is Shift Command D. So you can quickly see what it looks like with or without the textures while the clip was playing. I sometimes use this for color grading to see like a before and after what color grade looks like. So yeah, that might save you some time. So the next tip is simply understanding what we can do right where the clips join in. We've got a few functions. I've got two five second clips right here. They both add up to 10 seconds. And there's a reason I say this because we've got two different functions we can do right where the clips join. If I press command or control, I've got two different things I can do with the yellow arrow. I can extend the first clip without affecting the second clip at all. And that will add to the length of the whole sequence. So the whole sequence after this edit is going to be 10 seconds and some change. But if I use the other function with the two red hours, what that's going to do is going to extend the first clip, but chop the front end of the second clip, but maintaining the same length throughout the whole clip. So the whole clip is still going to be 10 seconds. I use this all the time for editing podcasts, and it means that you don't have to move all the clips around to extend those clips in between. Trust me, it'll make your life easier. Random thought, let us know in the comments if you're standing or sitting down. Chances are, if you're video, you're probably sat down at your desk trying to figure out how to get your workflow nice and crisp. Well, this video is brought to you by the 360 Kinetic Sound Pack, and hopefully this makes your life easier. It's got over 400 sound effects for you guys to use for your videos, vlogs, adverts. It works with any software. You just drag and drop those high quality samples and off you go. All the audio clips are royalty free, so you can use them as much as you want. Plus you get a bunch of the older family packs for free and the guitar transition pack. Check out the link below in the description. Let's get back to the video. The next one is using adjustment layers to do most of the heavy lifting. So if I drag this adjustment layer over the top, what I can do then is I can add some stuff to the adjustment layer, different effects. So let's go with a transform effect. And see, I wanna add some kind of zoom in. So I'm just gonna do this quick. You can check out other tutorials where we kind of break these down a bit more, but I'm just gonna keyframe position and scale, move five frames, and then let's just zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna ease in, ease out here. There's a shortcut for that. You can find them in the other tip videos. So right there, I've got just a smooth zoom in, zoom out. And right where the start of the adjustment layer is, I'm just gonna to go to the first keyframe and then chop that up. So I know where the zoom in starts. And right here, just by moving the adjustment layer, I can adjust where the zoom in happens. So that means you don't have to put the effects on the actual clip and then start moving keyframes around. You can just put it on the adjustment layer and let the adjustment layer do all the heavy lifting. And then the cool thing is if you have another clip, you can simply drag the adjustment layer across and just have the same effect. That goes the same with any kind of visual effects, glitches you have, just add them to the adjustment layer and move them around. It just makes life easier when you go in and re-edit stuff or you get asked to change the effects around a bit. You just move the adjustment layers around and you're done, easy. This next one is one of the latest features in Adobe Premiere. Joss did a breakdown video, but I'll show you how it quickly works. If you've got some music and say, I've got 10 clip video right here, what you can do is simply go up here and use the remix tool and then just adjust the audio to the desired length. And this will save you so much time because you're not gonna have to go in and find the beats and cut the music. And it'll just adjust the music, find where it kind of makes sense to make the cuts. And as you can see right here, it's made eight cuts where the music will just glue in together, make absolute sense. And I didn't have to do anything. So I'm gonna play through these cuts. So I wanna show you how smooth it actually is. You can barely notice the cut. Makes life so much easier, especially when you're on a time crunch and you need to get stuff done quick. This next one isn't Premiere Pro specific, but it'll save you loads of time and you can use it on any program pretty much. So say I've got this adjustment layer and I wanna move it down to a bin. So instead of dragging it and going down and kind of missing the mark, what you can do is simply use your scroll wheel. Use your scroll wheel while pressing down on the mouse and then find your folder and just simply drag it in there. 
done. Same thing goes with if I want to drag stuff onto the timeline. So say I want to take this photo and instead of dragging to the edge and waiting for Premiere to scroll around, you can just use your scroll wheel and scroll across the timeline and then position the photo where you want in the timeline. Super simple, but again, it'll save you some time. Next, say you wanted to zoom out and see your whole timeline instead of using this bar right here and zooming out, you can just use a backslash key and that'll zoom out so you can see everything in your timeline. Next, say you've got really long timeline and you wanna stay organized and you're passing it to other editors. We all know that we can press the M key and mark different parts of the video. What you can also do is press option and then drag that out so you can adjust the length of the marker and then you can double click and then you can name that marker and add some notes. And especially when you're working on big projects, this is gonna save you a whole bunch of time. Next is a cool masking feature that I don't know how long it's been part of Premiere, but I really wish I knew it earlier. So say I'm making some kind of reaction video and I adjust the scale of that and say I wanna mask that so I've got like an eclipse mask. So this gives me that mask right there. So if I wanted to make this larger, it becomes a hassle using these points to make a perfect circle nightmare but as soon as you're happy with the shape of that you can just press shift and then go to the one of the corners and then you get the two hours point right and left and it's when you adjust that that will adjust the size of the whole mask evenly i can't tell you how many times i messed around with those little points trying to make the perfect mask but there you go shout out to premier gal for that tip she made a tiktok video a few weeks ago and yeah much appreciated Next tip is, say you've got all these cuts and you want to add the same transition in. Instead of taking your transition effect, let's just go with a slide effect and dragging it onto each cut and adjusting it. Don't do that. Just drag a transition effect to one cut. Select that transition, Control C or Command C, and then while pressing Command or Control, select all your clips, and that'll just select all the cuts in between. Control V or Command V, and that'll just add the transition on every single clip. Last tip is adding a border to your photos, videos. So say I've got this clip right here, I'm just gonna adjust it, and say I wanted to have a white border around that clip. You could go into your shape tool and use a stroke to adjust that and then fiddle around with the sizes. But you could also just duplicate the clip, come into drop shadow, add the drop shadow to the bottom clip, and then choose your color, put the distance to zero, and then click this box that says shadow only, and then just increase the clip size by maybe 0.5, and that'll just automatically give you a sweet border just around your clip. If you want a longer breakdown of this, you can check out one of our previous videos where I break it down and give you a few options of what you can do. I hope you guys learned something new today. If you got any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. Check out the 360 Kinetic sound pack in the description. Like, subscribe, turn on the bell. We drop videos all the time. If you want to say hi to me personally, Dave the Greco is my ID handle. Till next time, peace.